Hello you. Today on U2 Spain Live, you and I are going to be asking whether you can get a non-lucrative visa on a UK pension. We will look at some case variations, some it depends, and also we'll cover some questions about healthcare cover and the S1. Joining me shir shortly, shirtly, <laughs> I've got shirts on the brain. Joining me shortly on the virtual settee by the virtual pool will be our best mate and residency specialist, Chris from Upsticks, who will answer all of your questions and more. So stick around and you'll get the answers you need. If you're watching the video back afterwards, hello too, and you can ask questions in the comments below. Do it on YouTube rather than on some Facebook group uh, because only I will get that and people won't benefit from the answers. So yes, on YouTube. First of all though, gather round, give us a wave, hit the like button and have your questions ready or just relax and enjoy the chat. Welcome to YouTube Spain. Let's start with our small but perfectly formed theme tune. Get ready to dance. Here goes. Right then, just before we begin, don't forget to take a note of our website, u2spain.com, where you can find loads of resources, specialists and links that you need for your move to Spain and for living here. There's a free newsletter at the beginning of each month, so sign up for it now. It doesn't cost you a penny to subscribe, nor does it cost you anything to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Subscribing just means you're telling YouTube that this channel, YouTube Spain, is one of your favourites and that you want to know when new videos are coming out. Finally, if you use the affiliate links on the website and in the video description below, it helps YouTube Spain without costing you a cent. You even get a discount on services too. It's a win-win-win with a cherry on top. So, without further ado, let's meet our lovely guest for today. It's Chris from Upsticks.es. Hola, Chris. Good morning. Tony, how are you doing? Yeah, it's very well, thanks. <coughs> the heat wave is still upon us. Yeah, yeah, but it's a bit cooler today than it has been, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We actually had rain yesterday in the mountains. Oh, we would we were down on the coast, but uh, yeah, we had a few spots of rain on the floor. We've got videos of it. <laughs> it was remarkable. Oh, well, send some down, please. Send some down <coughs> Malaga. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. We were at the water park on Thursday with the family, and it's. Uh, Oh, that was really nice just to throw yourself in, but I'm completely covered in sunburn all over. Yeah, it's been it's been a crazy time, and we don't really I, I don't really know what the what the weather's like in Compter. To be honest, in the summer, how high it goes, I'd imagine it goes a little bit higher, doesn't it? Cause it uh, well, it, in theory, yes, but every time we've been down to the coast, it's been a little bit warmer, but it's definitely more muggy down on the coast. <clears throat> it's not muggy at all up here, and we get a a, a bit more of a breeze. So um, it's a bit difficult to tell. It always feels a bit cooler with a breeze. Yeah, we never. We here in in Alarín de la Torre, we got we had records. Uh, what they can say it was record, but we're not. We're so I've seen quite regularly forty five degrees in inland Granada, Cordoba, and stuff. You see that, but here above thirty five, not really. We had a forty four this week. Wow, yeah. that is good. We had our um, thermometer out on the on the terrace, actually facing the sun, and it. I think I said this last week, it went all the way to, to 52, which is the maximum that the thermometer shows. Wow. And uh, that, so it could have been higher than that. So that was hot. Um, any shout outs for today? I know you've got one because we've got a photograph here. Of, uh, I've made John us. there. I think we've got a photograph to show, haven't we? I have got permission yeah. to do it. There he is, John McClear. Yeah. He's uh, having watch uh, one of our clients now as well, just uh, at the BLS, that's the BLS office in Edinburgh, and uh -huh. uh, had his appointment this week. And uh, that's uh, there's his there's his pack, so that's what we send out to people uh, with the application forms in and information. So you just fill it out. Um, <coughs> you basically fill that folder out until you're ready to go. Brilliant! Congratulations, John. You're all sorted there. <coughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, anybody else you need to yeah, say Mr. hello to? Mr. Levitt, who's uh, who's also watches the show, and they got the notification that they got their uh, they got their visas, and they were the very first people to ever go through BLS, so that's quite good news. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah. Well, let's say hello to Andy Cooper, Robbo, Graham Spicer, and Adam Farmelow. Um, Andy's uh, says good morning, nice and wet here in Northamptonshire. 
And uh, Andy Farmelow says, yeah, rainy Wolverhampton, sir. Hashtag winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send some of that rain over, if you wouldn't mind. We've got all kinds of articles about how the reservoirs are still really low, even though we got quite a lot of rain in May. <clears throat> it's not really helped. No, no, it's quite, I think it, it, it was, it's going to be quite shocking if we carry on like this, especially with the heat wave, um, mm. that we're going to have to really be careful. I know some some parts are already introducing um, water restrictions as well. Someone told me that Cohen had, where mm. sure it is, I don't know, that was at a meeting I was at the other day. And, um, and yeah, I think we may find some restrictions kicking in if we carry on like this. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. And we've got El Nino apparently is, is building up towards this winter <clears throat> and that's going to affect the heat and and the wet the extreme everything i think uh next year so i think it's going to carry on yeah and we've got we've got this phenom what's happened here is is that because it got because it was warm then got wet again slightly and then it's gone into heat what's happened is when they did all the the bother the cutting of the um the the, uh, the weeds and everything um it shouldn't get it shouldn't rain after that. Mm. So that little rain, and then it's all grown back. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't. It's all grown and dried again. So um, they're frantically trying to get rid of that now as well. Mm. So, oh, hello, Dan Bryan's from a miserable Somerset. I love it how they they do the weather forecast and, and use words like miserable and depressing and that like the weather has feelings andy f says are you there um i'm there are you there <laughs> i'm here andy cooper el nino is a boy in spanish yeah yeah it's the boy the kid he's not much of a kid so it's all about the the warming of the seas isn't it it's the it's the 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 warm rising to the surface or something like that <clears> or <throat> the opposite the no, cool going down I, I, i've spent 12 hours day doing <laughs> I, Not weather I, I do listen to podcasts here maybe i'll put one on about the uh the nino yeah yeah okay so uh, anybody if you've got questions on uh yes if you've asked any questions on social media we have two of those and we will answer those about halfway through the show but for now let's get on to some common questions about getting the non-lucrative visa on a uk pension uh, morning Paul Cook and first of all so well yeah the basic question is does having a standard UK state pension qualify for a non-lucrative visa unfortunately not unfortunately if you've got the standard and the full payment of the non-lucrative uh, sorry of the, of, the, uh, of the state pension then that alone isn't going to qualify you for a non-lucrative visa you're going to need to top that up mm -hmm. so uh, how much about how much what we said 203.85 in pounds is how much that what they say is the single uk maximum state pension yeah so uh, we've got that so we were just based on the maximum state pension which is uh, and I'm, i have got it in front of me <laughs> from yeah. the article that we write uh so if you've got 52 weeks of 203.85 you'll be getting an income of 10,620 and obviously anybody who's watching who gets different to that or can correct us let us know but we've got this off the official website so at today's exchange rate that would be around 12,200 euros mm -hmm. which would then give you a shortfall um, if you're a single applicant of 16,500 euros more or less but if you are a couple or a, a, um, who are a joint application it mm -hmm. actually only gives you a shortfall uh, annually of 11,500 euros mm -hmm. so um which was quite shocking when we did this so this question i wrote this article this question this it was an faq that came from a client i said well i've got a state pension can i get an nlv and i was like oh we haven't actually ever done the sums properly you know for that mm. and i was quite shocked when we looked at the sum for a couple because 11,500 short for if you both got a full state pension although it's an awful lot of money isn't as much as i expected it to be mm -hmm. that's the figures i've just put up there of, of what i typed out earlier that's the single sum yeah. so the 20385 months which which works out at the present exchange rates of about a thousand euro a month slightly over that depending on what exchange rate you get 
obviously when the the exchange rate goes down which it usually does after the summer into the winter then that will be less unless you've held on to a fixed forward exchange rate with somebody like uh, smart currency exchange there you go a bit of a plug for them as well and so that's the shortfall for a single person that's 16,583 at that rate I've not put the 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 married couple on there yet maybe I could put that on there for later and um, uh, and stick that underneath the article uh, underneath the video rather that would help yeah it's uh, yeah I was quite I was quite surprised because I think that um, I mean as I say it, it, that's obviously when we're talking about um, the 11,500 euros that's a shortfall annual shortfall so if you were to as we always speak about you can have passive income savings or a combination of both mm -hmm. Evidently, if uh, you were waking that up through passive income as we know for the renewal we're already skipping to renewals now passive income is counted as double whereas savings is only singular over the following two years mm -hmm. we'll explain that a bit more when we come to that question yeah. and just fill in any blanks on that so yeah um how can you make that up then that was going to be the next question how do you make up the the shortfall so there are uh, other passive incomes to start with aren't there yes i mean uh again you can uh, from obviously now if you're a state pensioner um you're, you're not working anyway so you might not have the same problems as some people do who are having to give up work to get an lp but uh yeah you can make it up from rental income that rental income can come from the uk or from spain okay mm -hmm. so um as long as uh, we had this conversation the other day with a client who wanted to buy a second property to rent out in Spain. As long as you're not running that as a business yourself and you're not working, mm -hmm. okay, and that, that second property is being managed or generating maybe a passive income from long-term let, for example, then you could use that income uh, to, uh, to, to make the shortfall. Evidently, that's very hard. Um, oh, I've lost you there. You yeah, still? I'm still here. Oh, Are you, you still there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, everything that's hard on the first year. So the first, so if we're talking about the first years, uh, making it up, you can make it other passive income uh, from, as I say, rental from the UK, or savings. Even if you've got savings, um, you could you could uh, you could use that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so and any other form of, of passive income that's not worked income to make up that shortfall. Mm, that's an interesting question from Alicante Explorer how many years do you need that income for prior to your application that's a good question now actually we've as long as with the state pension as long as you've got proof that you're going to be receiving it using i we we'd say at least it's not years you'd need you at least have to have started to receive the state pension we know that it's for life okay mm -hmm. so there's there's uh, a few common misconceptions with this so um yeah you don't have to have it been received state pension for x amount of time i would say it'd be best to have, have received at least three payments and have your pension letter which proves what you're getting on a weekly basis normally the pension letters prove on a weekly basis what you're getting mm -hmm. uh, definitely now it's not part of the application but definitely a good idea to back it up with what we call an escrito so a letter which explains exactly what is your annual income and proof of that money being paid as well um on that, there is also a mis misconception regarding savings because I had this the other day when somebody was making up a shortfall using savings and the savings were going to come from a property sale and they weren't going to be in the account for more than six months. They don't have to be in the account for more than six months, but what you do do is you have to prove the origin of the funds if you've got large transfers within the last six months. Uh -huh. Good. Hope that answers your question, Alicante. Good first name. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, John McClue's online. So, hello, John. We showed you photograph before. Great show as usual. Visa appointment was no problem. They put me in Jill at ease. I can't recommend you, Scouts and Chris, high enough. If I hadn't come across you guys, I'd still be in limbo. Oh. Excellent. Good to know. And Robbo's asking, good morning, Robbo. He's asking, out of interest, what's the state pension in Spain? I believe UK is one of the worst in Europe. Oh, good question. I should know that, really, because that's what I'll get. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it is it is higher i think but i haven't got the figures on me right now maybe maybe what we'll do is we'll we'll put them underneath the video at the end yeah it's just gone up hasn't it i think it's gone up uh, yeah is that to do with the new 
the new SS contributions. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we can Google that. We'll yeah. sort that out. Yeah. And uh, San Francisco Discovery says, "Good morning from Puerto Rico." Oh, what's the time there? It must be really early. It's like like four o'clock in the morning. Oh, well done for getting up that early to be on the show. You get extra points. So we've mentioned that's passive income, and you actually mentioned uh, savings is the other way to make up yeah. the amount. And like you said, when you do the renewal, it's only the savings part that you need to sort of double. Yeah. Yeah, so if you've got, for example, on the renewal, if you've got a shortfall, if you're a couple and you've got a shortfall of 11,500 a year, which that would be uh, 23,000 euros, where you would need the full 23,000 euros in savings if you are um, using savings, basically. Mm -hmm. Great. I hope everybody gets that. I've done a whole video on it one of the midweek wednesday videos if you need to hunt that one out or and but chris and i did one of the live shows all about it as well so we've got two shows you can you can search for either or both of those and the live show has got the time codes along the bottom as well so you can actually hunt for the part of the video where we explain that rather than watching the whole hour and a half but do that anyway watch the whole hour and a half it's good fun and san francisco says 4 15 a.m well done. Plus, I also have savings. Oh, that that adds on to. <laughs> I thought it was adding on to 4.15 and I have savings. But no, it, that adds on to this. Uh, if married, but the wife doesn't want to go to Spain because she is assisting her mother. Can I just submit only my paperwork? I meet all the income requirements with SSA and pension. Is that state? Is that a state pension in America? Is that what that SSA is? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Um, to answer your question, yes, you can. You can. We have many people who are single, so to say, but uh, we, we had quite a shocking circumstance from Manchester recently um, where, um, so there, we've had a lot of people who maybe um, one uh, part of the couple is, is early retired or one, we've got couples who come, one part is committed to live full time and the other person is maybe just doing 9180 because they're still working at the moment. That's absolutely, it's quite normal actually mm -hmm. we've seen it uh, with with a lot of couples married couples people doing that but we recently had uh, a really nice client of ours all our clients are nice but a really nice client go to manchester and, and 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 she individually qualified both on savings had decent passive income, uh, income of property in spain wanted to apply for the visa while her husband continues to work for five years and he's happy to travel backwards and forth because he's mm -hmm. got quite a, uh, uh, an intense job in the uk um and um and the Manchester consulate asked for a letter from her husband to let, to say that he let her go. Oh. And I was like, that can't be. Now that was, now I, it was the, the way that it was interpreted may be slightly different to the way they wanted it, but essentially they wanted something from the husband to say, yeah, yeah, it's fine for her to get a visa, which was like, mm, okay, I'm not too sure that's part of the official requirements, but that's what they asked. Mm. Okay. <laughs> she qualified individually. <clears throat> he, wasn't, he wasn't supporting the application. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's a, it is a bit odd, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, San Francisco says, yeah, the SSA is Social Security. So, yeah. yeah. So that fits in with your answer. Uh, yes, and he also has savings. <laughs> is it an interesting question? Sunshine Chaser, good morning. Is income from an active YouTube channel allowed on a non-lucrative visa? And uh, not if you're working. Not if you're working. The, but if it's, a, if it's an active one and you're no longer making videos then yeah if there's income coming in yeah if, if it's considered passive i.e that is something you've done in the past and you're receiving income from a passive uh sense from so it, it, you imagine that if you've got an asset which is generating money all right but you no longer work in that asset that's fine yeah mm -hmm. because you wouldn't have to register as self-employed if you're not if you're not if you're not registered if you're not actually doing any active activity the moment you do an activity, then you reg you're supposed to register as self-employed, and that doesn't qualify for non Yeah. So you can you can you can receive as long as you can prove any passive income from any asset that you own, as long as you're not working to maintain that asset. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that is good. Will Nelly? We'll talk about medical and healthcare requirements after the the midsection in the show 
and uh, yeah so that's that one let's get back to the normal questions we were going through uh, does a pensioner need to prove they are not working no so um, <clears throat> what you do need to do though is and you're going to need to do it anyway is take your pension letter with you mm -hmm. so your letter you get every April you get a letter proving what you're going to receive most of the time these letters actually show you what you're going to receive on a weekly basis and um, we've seen ones which also have a fortnightly uh, 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 payment scheme on there as well but mostly weekly you're going to need to take that letter with you mm -hmm. brilliant that's actually all the questions we had for this half well, but, um, that's interesting we've done that really 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 quickly any more questions on the on the live chat we could move through to the the questions from Facebook before we go to half point because the S1 and healthcare that's there are actually more questions about that and it's more detailed isn't it yeah brilliant. Now, just to <clears throat> mention that at the moment the consulates in the UK aren't requesting a translation of that pension letter so you don't need to take that at the moment let's see what they decide <clears throat> tomorrow but at the moment all three are just accepting the pensions letter as it is great stuff the questions from Facebook actually one of them was just a straightforward one which we basically answered Steve O'Brien saying uh, okay his UK full state pension is eight thousand pounds per year he owns a Spanish property is there any possible way to become a resident if that's what I wanted you would need to make up the shortfall to the prem which is uh, if you're individual applicant twenty eight thousand eight hundred so you know for a couple of thirty six thousand a year um, but it's a good point that you make there, Steve, because this is something that comes up all the time. So both for initial application and renewal, you prove that you've got a Spanish property, um, which the best way to do that is using a, a document called a Notice Simply. It's part of what they say you can use as your financial stability. But they don't give us a calculation as to how much they're going to take into account if you own a property. So, mm. you know, so we on renewals always get the question, well, I've got a property. How much does that count for? it was when i bought it it was 350k it's now worth you know 400 and i can't answer that question because it only says on the official rules uh you can use uh anything from passive income savings property but it doesn't actually say if the property is worth 400,000 we'll consider that to be 4,000 for example mm. yeah it's interesting yeah i wonder if we can ever get uh has anybody ever written to them and said is there a sum i suppose you'd have to write to all of the uh, all of the consulates wouldn't you it would be uh so be all the consulates and then it was also obviously the consulates do the due diligence on the initial financials for the first year and then when you come to do the uh, renewal it's the um estranquerias so you would have of to course, see what yeah. their interpretation was yeah one day maybe we'll write a letter to them It'll probably change after a few months anyway, so maybe that wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> I mean, on a positive note, apart from um, for the renewals, and we have had a lot of people with, should we say, complicated pension structures, and I know we always talk about when when, when you um, when you come to the renewal, you, the, a lot more translations are required because you can get away with less translations at the consulate, but for your pension uh, stuff. But for the renewal, you do need to present translations of anything that's in English um, but they they seem to as long as you explain it properly in a letter they, they they've been doing really well with, expl with understanding complicated income structures you know we recently had one where there was a, a an eight point an eight passive income stream all of smaller incomes which made the uh, minimum required amount and uh, it was an approval first time oh. great stuff Okay, hope that's answered your question, Steve, if you're watching. And thank you so much, at San Francisco. I'm calling you San Francisco. And uh, for your donation. That's the first time I've seen a donation show up in the live chat. That's, that's great. Normally they get uh, somewhere else on the screen. But yes, thank you. Just proves my point that, uh, that I made um, with, my, with my live gigs. Americans are the best tippers by far. And uh, if you don't like that, UK watchers, then... Prove it the other way around. And, uh, <laughs> click the button on that. There's a little dollar sign. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's only because it's a dollar sign. You think you might be giving dollars, but uh, it's fine. It's in your own currency. And here we go. Let's answer Robo's point. Can your property in Spain be used as financial proof? That we, I think we nearly answered that, as well as your income and savings for the uh, renewals. Yes. Yeah, so. 
it, it's certainly a good idea if you've got a property or any asset in Spain, uh, then it's a good idea to, to present that as well during the renewal process. Brilliant. Excellent. So, yes, let's answer the other question. This was about removals on Facebook. So this was from Linda who says, hi, Scats, being enjoying the YouTube channel. Thanks. Can you clarify something for me about physically moving stuff from UK to Spain? I'm told that I need to present the movers with my residentia card, cards, so that's the TIE, in order not to have to pay import duties. But if I'm not in Spain yet, then I can't have got the card, but my worldly goods need moving before I go. Any advice? Extremely tough. Um, I think the best advice we were chatting about, you came up with before the show, you're going to have to put it in storage until you get your ducks in a row with the paperwork. Mm. And how much does that cost? Is it, does that cost more than the, than the taxes would cost, the customs would cost? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Yeah, now you really need to have your at least your pader on and the fact that you've got your residency. Obviously, if you're if you've got an EU passport, you, your green residency card, or the fact that you've registered your visa and have your resguardo in place before you send your stuff. Otherwise, they're going to charge you tax on it. Yeah. Otherwise, you can claim it back, but getting tax back from uh, the hacienda is not the easiest thing to do. Might take you a while. They take it quick enough, but yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. We've just had ours to taken for the for the second quarter of the year we have let's get really excited for this week and then start again <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> brilliant uh does oh nelly has a question down here does uh, yeah let me just remove this other thing from the screen does a younger age have a negative effect uh, effect on any decision would they have any worries on you wanting to work that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, it would. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know, they do look into younger people with more, you know, uh, more vigorously. Um, you know, they want to make sure maybe if you're a younger person and you are struggling to to meet uh, the minimum required, you're really bordering on that minimum required, especially if you're just savings. And yeah, they would. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Um, mm -hmm. It does. It, it, how much does it affect their decision? Who knows? You know, we can't tell you how much it does. All we can tell you is that if you are a, a younger person and you are, for example, um, say you're coming for a year out, which we've had clients which have done that, uh, explain that. Don't lie. Don't just go with, okay, my mum's just given me X amount of money to put in a bank account and, you know, I'm going to have a year out and decide what to do after that. You know, honesty is the best policy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it can be tougher for younger people. You know, they do look into your financials a lot more. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robbo asks a very interesting question. How, how old is young? And that, that might make a difference. Because if you, for example, you're going to spend five years on the NLV and at the end of it, you're going to be 56, 57, they're going to say, it's not going to be easy getting a job then. Or you get, are you going to want to set up a business when you're that old? Um, but if you're, you know, if you're, 23 and you've got youth and vitality there's more chance of you going to be able to get a job especially if you've got qualifications you know yeah i mean i suppose it, 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 it depends as well on the on the position of the assets that you're presenting so the fact the passive income so if you've got you know if you're just going for a year and you're presenting twenty eight thousand nine hundred euros in a bank account that's only just been in there for six months you know you might find that they ask more questions whereas uh, we basically, you know, how old's young? Well, I'm 45 and I consider myself to be quite young still. Uh -huh. <laughs> but if you'd asked me that, I said all people are 45 year old. But, uh, mm. but yeah, you know, anybody, I think anybody below 50, uh, they're going to, they're going to look at maybe, you know, above 50, what happens is, and I'm only talking a generalization of our demographic, maybe with British clients is above 50, 55, what you find is people have quite decent private pension pots from work anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they'll have a current asset which maybe qualifies, um, but then behind the scenes there'll be like a sitting asset, like an investment or a pension pot, which may put the consulates at ease slightly because you can, we always say it's best to go. If you've got a cash asset, it's always best to go first with that cash asset and say, oh, there you go, I've got a cash asset which immediately qualifies me anyway for the first year. Then you've got your passive income and anything else you've got, you know, which may be investments, pension pots, SIPs or anything else. You know, it's always good to add it to that. Brilliant. Nelly says she's clarifying mid 40s, but medically retired. So have pension income. Right. So it's good to have a passive income there. Yeah, that's passive income. Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, John McClue 
is oh, no. mid forties young as well, by the way. Yeah, definitely mid. Well, I'm in, I'm approaching sixty. I still feel young, but um, my ankles don't. <laughs> Having wandered around for the last two days. So John says, uh, yeah, where does he have to go for his TIE? You're going to be sorting that out, aren't you? Is yeah, well, so in... you're going to be going to Mercia, be, no. yeah, Mercia, the main office in Mercia, uh, loads of parking around the corner, and you'll be meeting uh, lovely Victoria there. Um, oh, you're not taking a day trip to Mercia? Huh? I would love to. I would love to. If if there's if we stack a few up and I can get away. I haven't been up to Alicante in Mercia this year. I normally do one trip, you know, just to see everybody. But um, hopefully it's got a bit of a hectic summer. Uh, this year so it might be an awesome trip but uh, yeah i may do yeah yeah but with, there'll definitely be someone there and the main office in mercia is absolutely incredible when i see it it's like huge it's like a, it's bigger than like a than like a bus stop right yeah. it's got like three massive offices and there's this big thing where where they go and do the pickups and uh, yeah it's quite incredible to see to be honest cool i'll have to take a trip up there one day i've not been over to i've not even been as far as Almeria, and it's it, it's not that far, really. It's it's only an hour and a bit from here, I think, maybe two hours. I, I really want to go to. Um, I was looking actually for our anniversary, our anniversary with Lara, to go to um, the Mojaca Way because I want to go and visit Thorjena and Arboleas and all these towns here because I keep seeing like, all the paperwork comes across my desk for all our clients who live in like that area. Yeah, I've actually been. You know, and we've got so many people up there. I'd love to just go and just visit it and see these towns because, to be honest, before the non-Duke to be, I'd never heard of them. Mm. Absolutely, so yeah. So much to visit. Yeah. I and mean, we keep saying, where should we go on holiday next? And well, this, <laughs> just stay in, stay in the area. You know, there's so much to visit already. There we go. Jason, Jason's web says, "Good morning, good morning, Jason." Well, we've reached about halfway. I don't want to go too much beyond 11 today because we're i've got family here and i want to uh, join them around the pool so let's go to our halfway uh, advert right now so um yes it's a quick message from my three alter egos about the wonderful things available to you as you two spain fans so let's see if i can find that which one is it here it is take it away see you in a moment Are you getting something helpful from this show? Are you enjoying U2 Spain? Then click on the thumbs up! And subscribe to U2 Spain while you're here. Ooh. And click on the bell for notifications. It's all free, but it's worth loads of money. I need coffee to keep my picker up. You can donate coffee to us all. There's a link in the video description below. Or use the QR code. It'll be in the top left-hand corner of the screen after this message, sweetie. But that's not all. You can support U2 Spain with a regular monthly amount. It's only a few quid. Oh, he's worth a lot more than that. There's a link below to Patreon, where you can find out what extra groovy things you get by helping out. Oh, I'm all a quiver. One more thing. Get on with it. There's an important guest twiddling their thumbs. All right, calm down. The lovely video watcher needs this. Go on, then. There are lots of other links to vital things below. Like what? Well... Do you need private health care insurance? Yes! Do you need a visa or residency? Do you need to exchange currency? What about finding a property? Or getting tax and pensions advice? Or getting a Spanish mortgage? Or getting documents translated and apostilled? Or getting a medical certificate? Or finding a lovely little app for learning Spanish? Do you need the best mobile phone provider? Or a digital business card so you never need paper ones again? Or do you just want one of you two Spanish? t-shirts with a slogan on it. You can even get discounts on dental treatments and get a lovely little smile like scats. All of those links are there down below. If you can't find them, ask me in the comments. Is that everything, darling? I need to get my nails done. Probably not. But let's get back to the show, shall we? Back to scats in the studio. Oh, I wanted to say that. Oh, stop being beastly, you two. You too, Spain. Over to you, scats. Thank you, Scats, and Walter and Tommy and Dick. I like how Tommy says, getting a medical certificate. I'm always uh, on the way back into the room when he says that. Um, so if you out there in the world have any questions for any of them, nobody's had any questions for any of them yet. And uh, uh, Dick's been getting a lot of uh, airplay recently on some of the videos and uh, 
people quite like his uh, double entendres. So, so you could send some in if you want, and I'll put them in the videos if they're relatively clean. So we've done the Facebook questions. So let's move on and look at healthcare then. Healthcare for pensioners. So yes. first of all, does a pensioner need private health insurance? No, no. So if you're a state pensioner or you are um, you are married to a state pensioner, uh, then you can get your health care now using the S1. So um, <clears throat> there's quite a, a, a torrid time at the beginning of the non two visas, whether they would accept this or not, we didn't know. But the agreement's still there between the, um, the between the UK and Spain. And if you are a state pensioner, you qualify to get the document S1, which is essentially exporting your health care from the UK to Spain. Excellent. That is a very handy document. Yeah, and there were there were quite a lot of questions to begin with. They just would not let it go through. No, they wouldn't. And now they have this like, so we have this uh, like it's a very ridiculous requirement, I have to say, of now registering the S one before you go to the consulate appointment, but you can't register your S one until you've got your TIA and your padron, which you're not gonna get until you've got your visa. Mm. So what happens is it's created a circumstance whereas you have to we call it a pre registration, but it's actually a registration. So there is a link where you can do it yourself, uh, where you have to do things like submit copies of yourself holding your passport, smiling, so the details are clear. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you've submitted all the documents, this produces a PDF you print out and you take with you and accompany the S1 with the printout to prove you've registered that in Spain. Um, we, we do that for our clients, so they don't have to do that themselves. We do all that. Um, and then, but that registration will immediately, you know, it'll be, it's good for your appointment because at the appointment of the consulate, they can see, you know, oh yes, you've done it, you've registered your S1. But when that lands on the desk of social security, they immediately either reject it or give you a requirement letter and mm -hmm. say, you've sent this registration incomplete, which then, <laughs> so what happens is you have to manage that circumstance. So we know it's going to happen, but we know you have to get people through their appointment using this document. Then the social security come back and they say well, where's this or where sometimes in the case of people who are beneficiaries of someone else's s1 then you have to present things like marriage certificates as well to prove that mm -hmm. um and then by the time they come back to us hopefully people have got their visas they've got their uh, padrons they come to spain and we finalize the registration so it's uh, a little bit of a balancing act with the s1 to finally get it registered yeah so some pensioners get private health care anyway for the first year is that why is that yeah so i mean uh, a lot of people decide to just go with the private health care for the first year the first thing first reason being is um i mean even albeit that you only need the s1 for that appointment okay so you, you, you are qualified but having some form of health care for that first year um which doesn't necessarily have to be residency qualifying health care because you know you've got your s1 but something to cover you should we say for the first few months while you're getting over the registration of the s1 then going to the doctors registered it then seeing your doctor etc etc really just while you're getting your feet under the table a lot of people do that just so they're comfortable with the first year making sure that they're uh, that they're, they've got the cover and then you can run the two in tandem until that that health care policy um uh, uh, expires taking note that you have to give them warning otherwise it'll automatically renew and then mm -hmm. you can with your state health care mm -hmm. brilliant i have to just mention if those of you who are watching are wondering about the home in the background i've got my fan on because <laughs> it's, it's getting warmer as the day moves on but um, i hope it's not interfering it's it's a very quiet little tower fan but if it does interfere then tell me in the comments and uh, or rather in the, in the live chat and then i'll turn it off for you and you'll see me have a healthy glow let's just check dan bryans is saying oh he sent you an email chris just a small issue regarding our move so yeah. have a look out for that yeah john mcclue says port of mataran is lovely excellent good to know john oh no sorry jason says if moving to spain at 60 uh, he just wants to confirm that he'd need private medical insurance and then when 67 i could apply for an s1 when in spain as a spanish resident is that right yeah yeah i did a video on this actually the other day and uh 
and uh, yeah, you can. We've had many clients who have switched um, from just getting the timing right, as always, it's about the timing. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you can never be without healthcare, so it's good to run your private healthcare until you finally get that coverage in place from your S1, but yes, you can. Brilliant. And San Francisco is a USA citizen, so we'll need private health insurance if I decide to move to Spain under the NLB. Yes, and uh, well, you're saying about the the, the uh, Americans being great tippers. The the great thing about uh, when you speak to Americans is when you mention the cost of private health insurance, and like actually that's not too bad. <laughs> mm. Whereas a lot of people in the UK are not used to the private health care system. Like, what? <laughs> How much mm. is it? So that's that's the that's that's the bit of sweeping generalisation. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, you'll find that, um, that if you're used to paying a fortune, you, you're going to find that you can afford the the best health care insurance yes. in uh, in Spain. Yeah, especially if you're from the States and, and, you, and you're paying your health care there, and you're moving here and you're giving that health care up, the compensation for the price of the health care here is like most important. Mm-hmm. Jason actually raises a good point. Once I'm a resident, can I get state health care after the first year? Is that right? Yeah, so there is the, what they call the convenio especial, where you can pay into the uh, state health care system. You just have to check out how much your payments would be and how it will compensate against actually having private health care as well. Mm. Sometimes you might find that there's not that much of a difference if you're over 60, 60 I think, if you pay the, the, the higher rate. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, in theory, what you can do is you can make voluntary contributions into the uh, state health care system and receive it that way. Yeah, and just check what actual coverage you get on the Convenio Especial, because yeah. it may not be this, as much as you're getting on the on your private <clears throat> yeah worth checking that one out yeah. okay so let's move on to the next part um did we talk about how you actually get the s1 you were you were talking about that earlier yeah so to get the s1 there's a few ways to get the s1 you can, there is an online application but by far by far um we have uh is is we've well, got an article this as well is phoning them up give them a call you might have to wait and give them a call because what we've had lately, which has been brilliant, is they've actually been emailing the S1 first across and then sending an original in the post. Okay, so you get quite an original, thick, 100 gram printed on orange paper, original letter, which you're gonna take to the consulate. But if they email you first, it means that we can get on or or you can get on with the the pre-registration, you can recall it here in Social Security, uh, to get that document ready to take to the consulate with you. So by far, uh, the best way is to give them a call. Um, We've had some strange circumstances where we've had uh, people at the end of the phone said, oh no, we won't send an S1 to the UK, we'll only send them out to Spain. That used to be what it was like, so we used to get them to the office and then post them back. Um, now that's not the case. They will send them to the UK. So if you get somebody who says, I won't send it to the UK, it's because they don't understand, you know, there's a lot of people <coughs> on the phone lines, politely put the phone down and unfortunately get back in the phone queue and get someone else. Mm-hmm. Robo says, have you got any preferred medical private healthcare companies that you would suggest? You've got your providers on your channel, I think, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, there's one if you have well, a look yeah, at we, have, we, we all have, we all have preferred providers, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have some affiliations. And yeah. there's going to be another affiliation soon who's who's a broker for, for lots of different companies as well. But uh, we're just waiting for her to get her, um, what is it, a special document that says she can she can approach all the companies. Yeah. Which is so, quite now. Oh, has she? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll get her on the show then. Yeah. Very quick. So that'll be, that'll be one of our future um guests on the show that's sam great so uh jason says i'll get whichever one means i don't have to wait in an a and r a and e queue for 12 hours like in the uk you'll never have to wait that long in spain no i mean they're here i mean look it's again we can't do general sweeping you know but i they're here um uh, the horror stories i've heard in the uk and the way i've we've had i've had a few experiences here in uh, in a and e either myself or family or clients and mm. they're amazing you know they really are and, um, um they're just yeah they're, it is it is and in the main hospitals obviously get overwhelmed at times it's normal you know if you stub your toe on a friday night you might be waiting a bit longer <laughs> but mm. um but generally i mean a and e are, are fantastic yeah 
Jason says, apart from weather and cheaper cost of living, medical care is the major reason why I want to move to Spain in retirement. That's a yeah. good point, yeah. And we have here in Andalusia, in Granada, is one of the best uh, medical universities. You know, people, you know, and, and a lot of them end up working in hospitals in the local area before they go off. You know, they're doing their two years. And some of the, they're just, the, the, we've, we've come across people, especially in children's hospitals, they were like when they identified pneumonia in my son, he shouldn't have been 19. This nurse spoke perfect English, absolutely professional, and identified something that no one else saw straight away. I mean, it's in, and she just come out of university, so it's quite incredible. Brilliant. Which university is that? Is that Granada. Seville? Oh, yeah, Granada. Granada. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, a Good friend of mine studied there, and he said it's one of the best faculties for medical students in, uh, in Spain. Brilliant. Jason says, I don't mind paying for good service. Spoken like a true socialist. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get political. We've got the general election coming up in, when's that, tomorrow? Yeah, I was in the post office the other day. They were moaning about the postal votes. I said, how are you doing? Because it will take a lot uh, yeah. to, to post. And uh, they were like, don't ask bloody postal votes. <laughs> that's, all <the> post, <laughs> that's all the postmistress had to say. I've had enough of postal votes. <laughs> Fair enough. It'll be gone. It'll be finished after the weekend. And yeah. She'll be happy again. Or will she? I don't know. Maybe she'll always find something to, to gripe at. Um, so, uh, next question up here. How do you present the S1 to the consulate? Yeah, so, so you need... Now, what I would do... Now, when you get your S1, you're going to get two copies of the S1. OK. Um, now, you need to take just one of those copies. OK, you don't need both copies. Make sure you keep one of your copies just in case you need an original version because believe it or not they're quite hard to get duplicates of mm -hmm. and take it with the pre-registration or the registration that we mentioned i call it pre-registration because we always have to complete it mm -hmm. yeah so uh, take it with that registration that we mentioned um they can keep that original one that's not a problem um, always remember that it's a common misconception that people oh, well, i'm covered by my husband i'm covered by my wife that that person needs a separate F1 where they figure on the back page. Okay, uh, so that's it's very very important. So you can't just go with your husband or wife's or partner's S1 and say, oh well, they're state pensioner, we're married, I'm covered. No, you have to apply for your own one. Ah, that's very handy to know. Yeah. So is that everything about presenting the S1 to the consulate? Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. That's at the moment. All three consulates are accepting it in that format. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been fine um, um, so far. And then, obviously, afterwards, you've got the presentation in Spain. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. John says, I use Jane from Asas. As 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 Is that right? That's not spelt right. Great service. Um, I, think that's the, I think that's the same company that... Uh, uh, that, that, that my guy uses in the uh, in the notes down below um, so you've got your visa then what's next with the S1 yeah so with the S1 obviously you've got your visa you come into Spain and now once you've been gone through the visa presentation process and you've registered your visa here what we call stage 2 um, and you'll get your what we call the resguardo which is the proof that you uh, have registered your visa at the Estrangeria, the Foreigners Office. Um, and then you also need the proof of where you're going to live. Now, this is where, again, another interesting conversation I had with a client the other day. There's a couple of regions which will allow you to register uh, the Stage 2 without the Padron certificate, the Town Hall registration. Okay, Malaga being one of them. So uh, some people who haven't got their permanent accommodation already sorted out as you come to Malaga, register the visa uh, using the temporary address and then update it once they get their permanent address. But you wouldn't be able to register your S1 because you definitely need a Padron certificate to register an S1. Mm -hmm. So it means that state pensioners who are coming with an S1 would definitely need a permanent address before they can uh, obtain their health care. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Here we go from Dan. Well said, Dan. I couldn't remember the name of the company. It's it's not Atta. It's uh, Sigur, Sigur Kaisha Adeslas, uh, which he recommends. Kieran O'Toole, uh, who was on this show. Absolutely brilliant. Kieran is actually really, really good, yeah. And lovely bloke too. 
So if you need his details, then they are down below in the video description. I've finally got my brain to work. It's, it's stewing in this heat. It's, uh, it's not easy to remember anything. And old, old there, old there, can't pronounce that. I'm an Irish passport holder living in Northern Ireland and hoping to move to Spain in a few years. Am I writing saying I don't have to worry about visas, just residency and e-prem if I don't work? Yeah, so yeah, you get, um, you're, you're an EU citizen, so you already have the right to be here, so you don't need a visa to get that permission, but when you do come, you can tend to spend more than 90 days, you have to register. That's yeah. Resident. And EPREM is just one times EPREM, I think? Yeah. yeah, generally now, I mean, they look at one times EPREM, depend, again, it depends on what you're presenting, so you can't just come with one time EPREM that you plonked in a bank account two days ago, they're not going to accept that. Um, yeah. if, if you've had, uh, if, well, one thing, if you own a property in Malaga, do you know you don't have to present any form of monetary income or stability. You just present the note simply from the property. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, that's still in place. Um, but yeah, so there's various ways. But yeah, it's, it's the income requirements is 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 dependent on what you are. I mean, no one's going to live on seven thousand two hundred euros anyway. I don't mm. think a year. So you'd have more than that, I'd imagine. Yeah. So yeah, much easier. Yeah. Okay, then next question. What happens if you come on private healthcare and then you get a state pension? How does that change your finance and healthcare? Yeah, so if you come on private healthcare, then you obviously if your uh, state pension kicks in, then depending on where you are in the renewal process, you can then use that as part of your renewal. And then again, with the S1, you can apply for your S1, have it sent out to you to Spain and uh, have that registered and gain uh, access to the public health care system here. Um, I think one of the things to worry about there is just if you are combining it with private health care, it's just, as we said before, making sure you get the timing right. Okay, mm. And then also making sure you know the terms and cons of your private health care, because they do have a period which they, that you need to advise them that you're not going to be renewing. If not, it's just automatically renewed. Excellent. Jason's saying... Does what Chris said about owning property in Malaga apply to non-EU residents? No, unfortunately no. not. No, so well, I'm, I don't. So is, is that part of? So can you get residency just owning a property if you're non-EU? No, but you can include it as part of your application. It's definitely a good idea. Whereas if you're an EU citizen, sorry, and you're coming to Malaga at the moment. As we always say, it mm. might change your mind tomorrow. You can go and move an updated note to simply say, I own a property and they'll give you residency on the basis of that, plus where you live and your health care, etc. Cool. What if that applies to anywhere else in Spain? It's important to note the health care requirements are the same, you know, for EU citizens as well. If you're an EU citizen, you have to go, uh, if you've got an S1, and present your S1. But for an EU appointment, it doesn't have to be registered. You just go with your S1. Oh, that's handy to know, yeah. Yeah, so you don't go with this, this rigmarole of I'll pre-register it, get my card, then have to go and complete. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Can you export an S1 from another EU country, say France, for example? You had some clients, didn't you, yeah. from France? Yep, yeah, you can, uh, but you do have to, you have to be aware of the timing as well. So we had some clients who were in France and they uh, were, had, had healthcare under the S1 system, receiving it in France, either the UK or pay in France. Uh, we couldn't use that same S1 at the consulate in France to get the NLV. So they had to apply for a new S1 from the UK using a Spanish address. Actually, in this circumstance, they actually sent to this office. That's what they requested at the consulate. They wanted to see a Spanish address on it. But then mm. they immediately lost the right to their healthcare in France. Mm. So You've got to be careful with the timing, make sure you've got... It's always going to be that gap, if mm. that's the circumstance. So you've got to make sure you're covered with something private during that time. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting question. Do... Oh, Jason asked it earlier and I missed it. Do UK pension increases apply to me if I'm already a Spanish resident? Oh, good question. I don't know. I think it does, doesn't it? You'd still get your state health care, wouldn't you? Uh, increases? Mm, yeah, I assume so, yeah. Yeah, if the pension increases, because you've made your, you've made your contributions, you're on the pension. That's a good question. But I've heard, uh, where did I, where did I, now why is it clicking into my head that I've heard that it gets frozen once you're a resident in a different country? 
I'll yeah. have to check that out, to be honest. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's worth checking out. Yeah. Or, or, is, um, any, or is anybody watching who knows? Well, I think um, uh, Luthia, uh, our friend Luthia, who was on the show fairly recently talking about uh, pensions and financial management and to come over to Spain, she would be a good person to contact. Her details are in the video description below. So ask her for that. She's she, that's yeah. her that's her expertise. So yeah. And oh, good morning from Liz uh, and you two aromatherapy and yoga. And just to remind everybody, it's right at the bottom of the of all of the things you can get from U2 Spain in the video description is that you can get free yoga videos on um, on U2 aromatherapy and yoga. So look out for those. It's all free, and it's especially good for people who haven't done yoga before or who are like me can't bend at all. <laughs> so there you go. That'd be me. And uh, Jason says. As usual, I've heard it doesn't increase. That's the that's the pension, frozen pension. So there. Oh, Dan says, state pensions do get frozen. Local government, etc., or private don't. Okay. Yeah, I've heard this. I've heard this. Um, so that's. I mean, that's something you've got to look at. I mean, maybe... that means your pension goes down year on year against inflation. You're yeah, going to end up with, with and very little. My imprint's going up. I mean, we don't. We, Eprim may not go up if we have a change of government. I don't know. But if we don't have a change of government, it, it, you know. Yeah. Ah, our uh, friend with an Irish passport says I worked in benefits 20 years ago, and annual increases were frozen for benefits, including pensions. Mm. So that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, and Bev also has heard that state pension doesn't increase. It seems to be that. Everybody's vote says they've heard it doesn't increase. There you go. Unfortunately, well, I'm not looking forward to that then. <laughs> Ending up with with uh, a pension that's worth nothing 20 years after I get it, if I'm lucky enough to live that long. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, hmm. so, so you would get your initial. So I, so I, I say I wouldn't qualify for the UK state pension at all. So no. spent in Spain, but you, you would do. So you would get your initial payment, but then it would never go up. Yeah, that sounds awful. Well, yeah. mind you, I'll be getting a um, an Irish and a Spanish combined pension. There you go. Nelly says that's scandalous. It, it does sound scandalous, doesn't it? It's a big shock to me. I'm going to have to talk to Luthier and see if um, uh, see if there's any way of uh, offsetting all of that. Anyway, yeah, yeah. terrible. We've scared us all now. <laughs> it, but it's because I just know somebody. I know. At least four people who have made up the shortfalls in their pension by paying quite a lot of money to receive the full pension because they had that opportunity to do so. <coughs> yeah. And I don't think they've taken that into account. No. They live here already. Yeah. I mean, I'm paying extra. I'm paying an extra amount per year to to keep uh, topping up my UK pension because I didn't I didn't do the full 35 years that you need for the full UK state one. Moved to Ireland did eight years there and I'm going to be doing about 10 years here so I'll get some kind of combination of all three I think the the UK one's going to be separate because they they now don't kind of combine it so I will get two amounts come through right. and so it's going to be confusing yeah I'll see what the Spanish one is I'll, I'll be doing 35 here and that'll be it <laughs> yeah yeah and it's terrible for people who work like 45 50 years and they realize that they only needed to have paid in for 35 years because it doesn't get any more than that. You can't get more than the full amount. It's not okay. like you're topping it up and getting an extra bit, which which you should do if you're making the payments. Your, uh, your vida laboral. So you see, we have that this document that we hear, we're going off piece now, but the vida laboral, which shows you, so if you've had temporary contracts, it, always, it doesn't count as a full payment, so your time is mm -hmm. less. So like for me, for example, I've been here 23 years but my vida laboral, because at the beginning of my Spanish journey, I worked in temporary contracts, um, only shows uh, 18 and a half. Mm -hmm. So, but obviously now uh, running a business, you're paying full payments. So another, so at the end of this year, will be 19. So it'll be 16 years and I'll be 61 when I have my 35 years. There you go. There That's you go. the time to retire then. No point paying any more in. <laughs> no. Yeah. Alicante, uh, oh yeah, um, 
Or if you've spent 50% of your time in the UK, you do get the increase. Oh, uh, okay then. I don't know how that's going to work for me. Well, and Alicante Explorer says, my partner is 63, I'm 51. How long do you have to live in Spain to qualify for the Spanish pension? I think there's a minimum 15 years of uh, social security contributions. And, uh, yeah. The minimum is 15, I think, if you want to get the full one, it's 35, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's the standard. But um, that I can combine, I'm hoping I can combine my Irish one, the the eight years that I've spent there because I won't have been in Spain for for 15 years working by the time I retire. Right. So yeah, I think you can combine EU ones to to make up the 15 years. I really hope I can. Otherwise, I won't get anything from from the EU, and I'll be stuck with a very short, small UK pension. So it's a sort of outside when I worked it, I was 20 in the UK. So do I, I've got three years there. Do I, can I add that onto mine? I haven't even thought about that. I wonder, I wonder. Yeah. You, you can, you can contact them and find out it won't be very much. It's, no. You'll probably end up with it. Just, just being enough. It's like uh, Liz's mum got, had a UK pension and she had a, a small working, working pension, you know, private pension as well. And that, that extra, bit of pension took her over the tax allowance threshold and she ended up paying more which meant that she she's she's getting less than a state pension it's just ridiculous she's paying so much so much tax on it that she ended up with less and right. she she paid into that you know to get to get the benefit of it it's just madness it's all madness so yeah bev says i think that's only a still resident in the uk that they get the increase Oh yeah, is we're going to have to do is it. that. Bev who's pending a steak. I'm starving, Bev. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, Bev. When are you coming over? We want, yeah. we want feeding. <laughs> yeah. That's three times I've spent the budget in the drawer. You know, here I had to put it back again. To go. <laughs> yeah, that restaurant. They're waiting for us. They've got a table waiting. laid out. Yeah. Where are we going? Is that is it that Argentinian place in Malaga, or is yeah. it the place in? Well, we've got a yeah. competition now because I've just opened another one. I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, we might go to the other one now because that's quite nice. I have nice. tried it out. Just I uh, did some research for you there, Bev. I did have to. Just just for you, not for me at all. Nice. I like the steaks in Carbon Carbon in Malaga. We've been to that one a couple of times. Yes, yeah, nice there. I've been there. Yeah. So, uh, last point on our list here is support network for pensioners. There's this over 65s card that I actually mentioned on a recent video about how not to waste your money. That was this Wednesday. Yeah, it was the most recent video. So, Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, great video as well. Um, the, yeah, so basically, I mean, what I always talk about is we always we, we always talk about the S1, but they're not the actual consequence once you've got it registered. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've got things like, so obviously we've got support networks. So you can get, if you're over 65, you're a state pensioner, you can get the over 65 cards, which allows you to get discount, free travels on bus, uh, certain uh discounts on glasses and there's all sorts of stuff and the government quite often publishes uh subvenciones um uh, uh sub subventions uh, which are which is money it gives towards that so people get discounts on certain services so that's a brilliant idea to have that mm -hmm. um but also it's just realizing what once you've got your s1 and you have got it registered what you've got to do so it doesn't stop there you get a letter I've got one here which accredits your right to healthcare you still have to go to your local healthcare center register that uh, because it's public health care the likelihood is that you may not get anybody who speaks english i uh, think you've had your own experiences haven't you at the local healthcare center mm. and um to register that letter so you're going to need someone to help you go with you there and maybe to your first doctor's appointment as well because it depends on who you get as a doctor so some doctors We've seen really varied circumstances where we've had clients who have had, should we say, various medical issues and required uh, treatment and drugs and prescriptions. And they've literally gone with a list like this and gone to the doctor. The doctor's gone, yeah, right, you can have them. Here's the equivalent in Spanish, not even done anything, you know, crack on. Mm -hmm. And then we've had doctors who have said, no, do you know what? Um, I want you to do a full blood test. I want you to do this, I want you to do that, because it's up to me. To decide what's best for you now this is what someone else decided this was best for you now i'm going to decide what's best for you mm -hmm. so um we've had both ends of the scale so you definitely need someone with you you know if you're gonna go see your your doctor initially mm. 
Good point. Oh, Alicante says, does the visa period count towards the 15 years to get a pension? Interesting question, because you're not working. Is there any other automatic payments that go in if you're on a uh, non-lucrative visa? There wouldn't be, would they? No. No, because no, you're no. not paying into Social Security, so no. Do you mean in, in the UK, you mean? Oh, you can top up your UK one. You can pay an annual amount to the UK, which is about £163 a year, I think. Yes. That's the amount that I paid. No, but you wouldn't. So it's a contributionary, but in Spain, it's a contributionary-based system. Okay, so if you contribute, um, then you will get a pension of some form. If you meet more than 50, if you're on a non lucrative visa and you're not contributing, then you're not going to get any pension at all. You don't. The fact of just being here 15 years isn't going to give you a pension. No. Um, like the healthcare system here in general, general because we have autonomous communities and everyone works slightly differently, uh, but in general, <clears throat> it's based on a contributionary based system. So to receive healthcare, you have to be contributing into the social security. Now, there are circumstances where people can apply to get the healthcare if they're in, you know, if if they're in financial dilemmas spanish nationals can do that if they're on the minimum payment they're on the dole or something like this mm -hmm. but um you, the best example i've got of this is when um my daughter when she was one and a half got taken to hospital and uh, we got there everything was cool handed over our cards and everything yeah brilliant um, but what you're supposed to do is when a child turns one i had done it for my son not for my daughter is associate them to a contributor so uh -huh. they get one year Okay, which has now been reduced actually, but back then it was one year. Then you have to go to the social security and say, right, they're going to be associated to my social security account. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you have, for example, a main contributor, sometimes it happens in the family where the wife or the husband isn't working and they'll be plugged into that other person. And my daughter wasn't registered to anybody, and they were like, if you don't run down the social security now, you're going to get a bill. Wow. Yeah, that's that's honest. And the guy said to me, "Look, no worries. We're going to put her in. She's going to be in for a couple of days anyway. But Monday, you've got to run down the office, no appointment or appointment, and get her associated to you or your wife. Because if not, she won't be leaving out here, here without a bill. So there's not an NHS as you would know it in the UK. That's how it works here." Mhm. Mm John's got a good question. Can I get my state pension if I had to give up? work early due to having a stroke i've worked for more than 35 years well the last bit gives you your answer because if you worked for more than 35 years you've made the maximum contributions anyway so you should get the the full state pension doesn't matter that you've given up and that you're not making any you'd, you know if you made any more contributions it wouldn't increase your pension anyway so there you go i think that answers that one he says he's 58 congratulations so am i <laughs> Uh, you'll probably end up getting more from the UK than I will, I think, because uh, uh, I, at some point, when I was on working tax credit, I don't know if that still exists in the UK, but way back when, 15 years ago when I was getting it, I was on a low income being self-employed, and I was on working tax credit, and I opted not to pay class two contributions for a little while, while I was on low income, and so I lost those contributions. Uh, but I think... All together, I'll have a good 35 years by the time I've finished. We'll find out one day when I'm, when I'm crawling along a gutter going, please give me some money. <laughs> we'll find out what my pension is. So We'll still be doing these. Yeah, we'll still be doing these, hopefully. hopefully I'll, I'll, and I'll be, my, my begging bowl will be the little dollar sign in the corner of the screen. I'll be asking for contributions. Have Isla. Isla, my daughter's going to take over the lives. So I've got she's six, seven now, so another eleven years. You'll have Isla on. Don't you? <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> perfect. She's bright and bubbly. Yeah. So, Bev says John. You already said she wants to take over. My son's like, no, I'm not bothering. But she's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Fair enough. <laughs> now Raoul's just going to be a golfer. That's, yeah. <laughs> he'll just chill out. Uh, Bev says John, go to the government gateway. They'll show you how much you'll be getting. That's true. Yes. Anybody who wants to know what. UK pension they'll be getting there is a government gateway and you can you can send them in a request and they'll send you a letter which says what they estimate your pension will be at your point of retirement if you continue to make national insurance contributions uh, so there's a standard letter that they can send you 
there we go so uh, if you have any more questions uh, in the live chat ask them quickly now there's a little delay to that so while you're while anybody's writing their questions if you have any more questions or comments after we go off the air put them in the YouTube comments below like I said afterwards not on some random Facebook expat group because that won't help very many people because only you will know you've asked that question under that specific post and uh, yeah if you put them in YouTube everyone else will get their answers and the help you need that watch this video absolutely for free and it is a win 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 with a cherry on top there it goes and uh, I've got to put that one up it depends oh, we've not seen that one this week so uh, here we go there's the chat don't forget by the way to click on the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and so you'll be the first to know what's coming up each week on the live shows and the midweek videos and don't forget the little dollar sign which is oh, I can't point the right direction down that way somewhere at the bottom of the screen or or use this use this thing if you want to donate as well and buy me a coffee all kinds of ways to do that um, are there Jason says are there old people's homes yes is there care for people who uh, who can't care for themselves anymore I think we've had that question before but yeah uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a state. We had that before, didn't we? There's, there's a, there's. It depends again what you've contributed to the state. I think there is. If you've contributed to the state, there's state run hair care homes here. Um, mm -hmm. Quite a really nice one in Villa Valerie. I keep saying to Lara, look, if, it, if all goes wrong, we'll be there. Yeah. Uh, they're just telling you what it's nice, but um, yeah. But obviously, for a lot of uh, people who moved over, they wouldn't have that option of state run care homes. So you'd have to get a private option. Great stuff. Everybody's everybody's saying thank you. Great show as normal. Thank you so much. Yes, so thank you everybody on the live chat. You've been wonderful. And yes, thank you, Bev. And very soon I'll tell you who's on next Saturday's show. But let's everybody say a huge thank you and give a big virtual hug and a kiss to Chris for being amazing and helpful as usual. Let's take down that question. There we go. So uh, goodbye for now. We'll see you in two weeks when we will be talking about who knows, who knows. Well, I'll be in two weeks. I'm, just, I'm going to be in the UK. So. Um, Ooh, should we do a live from one of the? Yeah, let's try. Well, I'm trying to. Uh, let me. Let me. I, I don't. I've got. So next week I'll go on Thursday. I've got a wedding, and then I'm. I'm hoping to get now to both BLS offices, London and Edinburgh, which is going to be a bit of a mission, to be honest. Mm. Um, but I'm hoping to go there just to get some content because I like to know in my head, I need to see where my clients are going to go and I haven't been yet. So yeah. uh, that's part of the plan. And I don't know where I'm on Saturday, so uh, leave it with me. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Brilliant. Then. Let's do a live. Let's do a, a road yeah. report. We haven't done one for ages. Outside BLS, which that's sounds like BLS. some kind of uh, store, doesn't it? BLS. Yeah. I always keep thinking that. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you soon then, Chris. You see take you care. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye. There we go. So on next Saturday's show, I'll, hopefully I'll be talking to... Let's just check whether I've had an email back from her. Then we can, we can, we can find out live. Uh, yes, she has. She's much better. But unfortunately, she's not available for next week. So it, it's not going to be Luthia. I wonder if we can get... Sam on the show um, to talk about uh, insurance now that she's got her license to be a broker she is absolutely wonderful I'm going to ask her very shortly anyway I will announce that on our uh, not YouTube Facebook community group and let you know I'll announce it on the YouTube Spain Facebook page as well so that you get it even if you're not a group member but do join up the Facebook community it's lovely and um, yes, we will speak to Lucia, the lawyer, on, on a future show. We'll try and get her on in three weeks' time then. I'll ask her that in a moment. But she is feeling better, those of you who were watching last week's show. It's good to see. And uh, John says, uh, if you meet me in Murcia, Chris, for my TIE appointment, I'll buy you lunch. There you go. So, yeah, you'd better go to that, Chris, otherwise it's going to be Tom who's getting the free lunch. <laughs> So thank you, everybody who's joined me on the live chat. I won't go through all your names, but thank you. Thank you, especially to San Francisco. I don't know your name, San Francisco. Maybe you can put it on the next time. 
and uh, to everybody out there for watching the video um, afterwards and for leaving comments, hitting the like button and buying me a coffee.com. I'll see you on the latest helpful video on Wednesday. If I do one this week, this may be the first time that I miss out the Wednesday video because I do have family here and they don't leave until Wednesday. So I might make a short one, just a really short one. Um, but if I don't see you then, I'll see you live next Saturday morning at the regular time of 9am if you're in UK or Ireland or the Canary Islands or 10am if you're in Spain or anywhere else in Central Europe. So that's all for this week. Someone pass around the pension and S1 cookies. Peace and love to all of you. And here is one final message from all of my alter egos. Where are they now? That's, here they are. Bye bye for now. Bye lads. Bye. Goodbye. Toodaloo. Peace and love. Peace and fluff. Oi oi. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. One more cosmic dance? All right then. Look mum, I'm dancing. Oh, I'm all a quiver. Let's dance.